beat two, three, four. He's back. <laughs> What's up? Well, welcome back to Dylan Butler. Thank you. All right. So hour number one, and, and you know how Wall Pass Wednesdays go sideways here. Uh, this week, before you came in, we basically completely and totally degraded into stadia down here. Literally, we went stadia down here in hour number one. We were talking about good venues, what makes a good venue, bad venues, what makes a bad venue, what should capacities be when it comes to soccer-specific stadia in Major League Soccer or in the United States these days. We have gone completely down the rabbit hole and it's a topic we've talked about before, but since it's the beginning of Major League Soccer season, we have updates and things like that. We wanted to talk about, first off, we wanted to talk about Dylan Butler Estates and what's, ha what's happening there. We wanted to talk about NYC and their venues that they are currently bouncing around in. We wanted to talk, and we've been talking about all of that. We've been talking about Red Bulls. And why in a soccer specific stadium, you only have 12 people showing up and it is a challenge for television producers because you can't show end zone shots because you're going to show a lot of empty seats. You're going to be basically shooting the mat, the action, your game cutaways and like six rows up mm -hmm. when you're doing things at Red Bull Arena. And we were trying to workshop fixing Red Bulls and what to do. So what topic of all of Stadia down here, specifically in the five boroughs in New Jersey involving NYC, City Field and Yankee Stadium, Dylan Butler Estates, Red Bulls, which one of these topics would you like to tackle first as we tackle them all this morning on Stadia down here? Yeah, I mean, it could be a combined uh, tackle, right? Like uh, se se several uh, topics all jumping in for the tackle. Uh, I I would say, so first off, look, clearly in this area, the best facility, the best venue is absolutely Red Bull Arena, right? Like there's no, no question about it. Um, for the, for, for those who haven't been there, like, I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house. Um, even with the attendance not being obviously what the Red Bulls would hope it would be, and actually significantly less than that, there's still a good noise, actually, even, you know, with like a hundred people there or whatever it is, like uh, with, with the roof, like the sound um, kind of stays in there. So, so there's a good, <clears throat> there's a good noise and energy um, still to the building. Um Maybe, maybe little known fact, I don't know, but terrific empanadas. There's an empanada stand. Uh, wrong with terrific empanadas. <laughs> um, and they have in the past uh, also been part of the halftime food service for the press corps. So that's uh, um, always a positive as well. Um, for from a, uh, and, and look, I think most of the, the, the viewers or listeners don't really care about this part of it. Um, but from a, from a journalistic perspective, like from a, a reporter's standpoint, the best press box in the league. There is not even a question. Like you're right above the two benches. Um, the two the teams come right in um, underneath you. So, uh, you know, it's a great, great vantage point. Um, but, yeah, it's it's for many years now you've struggled to – get butts in the seats. So yeah, I mean, that's absolutely a concern. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to do things with the path train. Um, Harrison, New Jersey, isn't the, you know, easiest place to go. Marketing could be an issue, right? Like who do you market to? Are you marketing to New York city people? Because it's hard for them to get there. Can you go full New Jersey devils and just be like, Hey, Jersey, let's go. Right. Like they've tried for many years to, go after the, the, the New Jersey soccer moms and dads. Um, I don't think they've done enough to go after the Hispanic audience in that area, right? There's a lot of Portuguese, there's a lot of Brazilian 
um, right there next door in Newark. Uh, I think they could do a better job of marketing to them. Um, but those, yeah, those are, I mean, look, how to fix Red Bull, like Mark Fishkin, uh, who, who's got his, his great blog, um, Seeing Red, it's very funny. Every year he comes out, like just before the home opener, um, already answering the questions like that would pop up, right? Like why are people not going to show? But he's got like, I think he's up to like 34 reasons why, um, you know, from it's, uh, you know, it's a European ownership to it's not easy to get there to it's cold outside, like a million different things. Um, it's unfortunate because I think, you know, like I, 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 I hooked up a buddy last year whose son is big into soccer. Um, this friend of mine, Jason, has never been in the soccer. Um, he went to the match. He went from Massapequa out here on Long Island. Um, it took him forever to get there. Yeah. But he, once I got there, it was amazing. Like the 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 atmosphere, the experience was incredible. He just wishes it didn't take him as long as it did, right? So um, that's part of the problem, obviously, you know, with, with that. Uh, I know they're still building up the the area around. I remember when Red Bull Arena opened, there was it was nothing around it. You know, now at least you do have some restaurants and um, the path station has been improved, but still a lot to do um, on this side of of the river. Um, yeah, yeah. NYCFC has played. I think I've I didn't go to the match in Hartford. Okay. But I've been to home home games at uh, obviously Yankee Stadium, at City Field, at Red Bull Arena, at Fordham University for a U.S. Open Cup match, at Belson Stadium uh, on the on the roof of a parking lot, ah! <laughs> at um, which in itself it's a that's a great you know I mean that's a perfect spot for their for their. Um, for their two team, but it's, it's wild, man. Like I remember when that got built um, and I was covering St. John's soccer. Um, like I would never park in the, in the lot uh, adjacent because balls would just fly over and yep. just like, you know, land on cars and crashing uh, wind shields and <laughs> yeah. cars. You got to go to dent wizard after a home game. hundred percent. So, uh, and actually ironically, you probably would have went, to the iron triangle next to city field to get your car fixed up, which is now become going to become NYCFC's um, new stadium where, where they're going to be. So right now, Dylan Butler estate slated for still 25,000 live work play environment, 800 million. That's the numbers that we, that the post came out with in this in uh, November. Is that still pretty much what you're hearing? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, no change, no change there. Um, um, you know, I think in a perfect world, I well, in a perfect world, they'd already have it. But, um, you know, they would have hoped to have it before the World Cup. Uh, obviously, it won't happen before the World Cup, but it'll happen just after the World Cup. Um, should still be enough of a buzz, though, I'd imagine, right? Like just off of a World Cup, the next season of of, of Major League Soccer, um, it'll be really interesting that to see. I I, I think it's look. I've said it a million times, no pun intended. I think it's a home run because yeah. of where it is. Um, I think they'll draw too as well. Like, I think that'll be, that'll be one of the better, you know, like almost like a, well, I was going to say bank of California, but now what is it? BMO stadium, BMO stadium as opposed yeah, to, not to be, not to oh, be, not to be, that's BMO different. Stadium. Ooh, it's different. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think it'll have that kind of a feel, right? Like that, you know, inside the city, um, you know, inside the five boroughs, um, the energy that comes with it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously looking forward to it. It's going to be a few years down the road, but um, hope it, hoping maybe the construction is, you know, maybe maybe, maybe some bonuses there. Like I know, I know uh, um, nearby LaGuardia Airport, um, you know, they had major renovations there and they put in a clause to the you know, construction company, like, Hey, listen, you get it done early, you know, you get a couple million of a bonus here. So uh, hoping maybe something similar is uh, in the works here. Yeah, nudge, nudge. A little yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, maybe hey, 
get it done early. You know, hey, you know, so something. Is that a moment. city thing? Is that a New York City thing, or is that just like a general construction thing? Oh, I would think that's a general construction thing. No, I absolutely see. You get spring training. You bust out your Yankees mug this morning. Well done. <laughs> uh, but no, I think that that's a general construction. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and say a general construction stereotype or conception by those of us outside the construction industry. Right, there right. we go. We have absolved ourselves of any kind of uh, implication whatsoever. I think if, it works. In all, I think, but honestly, John, I think it works in all facets of work. Right, like. Your uh, you, you meet you know, your there's, a, there's a long line at the restaurant, right? And you yeah. and your wife are trying to get get inside. You, you go to the meter to eat. Listen, eh, a little something something here. Uh, get us a little table, right? Like it works. M money money gr green works everywhere. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're you know, if you're Jerry O'Donnell and you're with your wife uh, Rebecca Romaine and they give you a table toward the middle of the restaurant, you sit there and you go, hey, wait a minute, I'm Jerry O'Donnell. Here's my wife Rebecca Romaine. I think we need to win. <laughs> This ha no lie. This happened. We were in, uh, oh, where were we? Uh, we were in Manhattan. Uh, the boss and I were having uh, breakfast. We, you know, we're doing a, a weekend run up to go see plays or something. And we go to this restaurant in Manhattan for breakfast. And literally, we're seated. And Jerry and Rebecca come in, and they're seated. They're like, you know, two sections over but we know it's them you know and you're not going to sit there and you're not going to stare you know if you're a guy it's like oh it's rebecca romaine oh that's her husband yeah and then you keep trying not to stare but you keep turning <laughs> your head kind of casually and he they got seated in like the middle part of the restaurant and literally when they got seated he stands up and he goes walking over to the wait staff and he's like you know can, can we and he points to the the table right at the window and uh to to your uh to your conversation there, there was a little magic done I don't know what specifically was done, but there was a little magic done, and all, all of a sudden Jerry and Rebecca end up going to the front of the restaurant. So now at least it was an open, uh, open table. Like they didn't just upend people. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> like, hey, yeah, it's yeah. like no, yeah. you're 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 moving, but yeah, they're, they're literally the the window table was open, and so there was a little magic that was done, and they got to move from the middle to the front. If if uh, Dylan Butler Construction is building soccer specific stadia these days. What would your base capacity be for a soccer specific stadium here in the United States? Are you like Snapdragon in San Diego making it 30? Are you like Anthony Precord in Austin going 20? Uh, the, th the thing is, is that we, when we got into this this morning, we were talking about teams, capacities, geography, placement, all of these different things. But I think for me as a baseline, if you're wanting to, A, have a Major League Soccer franchise and you have it or you have one and you're an MLS 3.0, I would think that also if you're trying to attract other matches, perhaps, that you're going to want to be in that 30 range as a landing spot. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I kind of maybe go in, in, in between, right? Maybe like a 25,000 is, is good because... You know, I, if if you're 30 and you're drawing 16, like you're half you're half empty, right? Like it's not a good look. Um, if you're 20, then you're right. Like, you know, uh, a a big international match or or or, or you know, I got maybe the U.S. national team isn't necessary. I mean, they do they did play at, at Austin, obviously, but um, you might struggle to 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 get those matches. Um, so yeah, I, I think maybe right in the middle, like maybe a 20, 25 is is a good is a good number. Um, I think NYCFC has that about right there, you know. Well, and and that gets into the other part we were discussing when we were trying to figure out Dylan Butler states with NYC. <laughs> is twenty five the right number? Does it need to be more because of the support and location of the stadium? Is the 25 right for when Dylan Butler Estates gets built or does it because it's New York City in all caps and neon and, you know, like on the, you know, on the, the top of the was it the Silver Star Studios or whatever it was, the big neon sign. Because, oh, yeah, yeah. because you're in New York City, you've got to be larger. Is 25,000 the sweet spot considering all of the different variables and locations for Dylan Butler Estates? Yeah, I think I think they they nailed it. Right. Because <clears throat> I think if it's. You, you want it to be like it's it's such a it's such a it's such a difficult uh, 
exercise there and you've got to get it right. But like, if you make it, uh, if you make it too small and then you've got like this big buzz and people want to go there, you're, you're kind of, you know, punching yourself in the head. Cause you're like, I, we could have drawn these millions more of dollars, right? Like by having it be larger, if it's too large and like, you know, maybe may, again, it's going to maybe aesthetically not look as good. Um, so you, I'm sure they've, you know, did a lot of work to, to, to get to a number, um, that they felt comfortable with. And, and I think 25 is pretty good. Uh, and, and think about it too. Like it's gotta be, um, like you want it to be a ticket. I don't know. I, I think, I think you want to borderline on it being a tough ticket to get, Yeah, but also you want to obviously draw families out and, and that's how that's, you know, look, that's where season tickets come in. That's where group plans come in. Um, that's where mini plans come in, whatever it might be. Um, but I think ultimately you want it to be, a you know, a destination where you, you really want to get in. You don't probably want it to be too difficult, uh, to then, you know, those potential fans now leave or, or, or don't arrive. So it's, it's, it's a really tough balancing act I'd imagine for, um, I don't even know who's, if that's a marketing job, if that's like who, who has that kind of job to figure that out. But, um, it, it's a tough one, no doubt. All right. We actually have games that <laughs> we played that matter yeah. Yeah. this past weekend. Um, I know we could probably go overreaction Monday on a wall pass Wednesday and cross the streams and see what kind of collision happens here. But when you look at week one, what are some of your takeaways, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, mm-hmm. What are some of the, the grander things that you take away now that you've had a couple of days to sit on week one? Yeah. I mean, uh, and, 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 you know, again, not to, it is the day to go off the rails, but, um, uh, I, I watched a lot of the action on MLS 360 on the whip around, um, which I thought was great. I, I, I think there's, there's improvements to be made. Yes. Uh, certainly. Um, I would have loved to have heard, the goal calls, right? Like you go like red zone, like you, you know, let's go to Kansas city. And then you've got first and 10 from, you know, and then you get the whole call. Yes. Um, I would have rather that than um, the studio guys kind of talk over it. Um, And and again, that's a tweak. That's not like it's fixable, right? Like, um, but I, but I just love the idea of like being able to get all the big moments in one space, right? Like instead of having 17 screens going on here, um, and trying to to eyeball all of them, like I thought it was great. Um, I thought the picture quality was awesome too, uh, as well with Apple TV. Um, a, a lot of positives there to start the season. But uh, to your question, team wise, um, the the teams that really kind of stood out to me as teams that maybe stamped themselves um, were some of the usual suspects. It was Philly right away, right? Like you know, taking a punch and then and then you know, pummeling <laughs> as a response, um, kind of showing, look, yeah, you know, we, we deserve to be potentially preseason favorites, right. Or certainly among the top two. Um, so they impressed, I thought Seattle impressed, um, you know, they, they showed, look, when we're healthy, uh, and maybe rested as well, like this is wh- who we are now. An asterisk there is, I still don't think they have the depth, right? So an injury, like they did it with Eber and, and Rui Diaz, and that was great, you know? But if Jordan Morris goes down, if Nico Ladera goes down, if, God forbid, Joe Paulo goes down again, they don't have that guy, right? And and then they're back where they were. So um, their best 11 is about as good as it is in MLS. I don't know if they got more beyond that. So those... Uh, and St. Louis too, right? Like what a great story that is! <laughs> uh, incredible first match. Um, you know, Tim Parker, the the unlikeliest uh, in that trivia question of who scored the first goal in club history. Uh, that crazy, crazy back pass. Feels okay, so, so cool. all right. So uh, if you're if you're Jared Stroud, yeah, in that situation, <laughs> yeah. Do you do what allegedly, probably, maybe, possibly Jarrett Stroud did and called for the ball from Kip Keller, former teammate, who recognizes your voice? 100%. There's, there's the still where you see Jarrett Stroud, hands open. You know, he's he's like, he's calling for it. So in that, in that game state, 
You are Jared Stroud. You do the same thing. A hundred percent. Every time I do that, without a doubt. Okay. Listen, you, you got to – it's about winning games no, no. And, and, and having an edge, right? And, like, afterwards, you hug, you have a beer, you're friends again. Um, but in that moment, like, you got to find a way to win, right? And it's not dark arts, but dark arts happen as well, obviously, in the game. So, so it's like shade of gray arts, if not dark arts. <laughs> Any, any, uh, by any means necessary. Okay. <laughs> so, means, yes, no doubt. Um, so, yeah. it was, it was obviously within the, you know, like there were no oh. rules broken. Um, oh. love it. Yeah, absolutely. Do it again. Yeah, um, yeah. and then, and then a ridiculous, uh, winning tally, right. By Joe, Joe Klaus, where, um, I love the cut. And again, unfortunately it's Kip Keller who he cuts back. Oh. Um, rough day for him but uh the cutback the toe poke finish inside the far post i love to um you know his celebration if you will which was essentially just collapsing <laughs> onto yeah. the ground yeah and exhaustion and cramps and uh uh yeah what a scene that was for them so so those are my three biggest sort of uh positive really you know well done and of course atlanta as well to come back the way they did but there's concerns there that it needed to be two incredible moments in stoppage time right like and again th- there's injuries there they're not quite who they are yet an important win for for them you know while they're still not 100% um but Amato was was brilliant right individual performance wise the best of 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 match day 1 um the uh, flip side of the coin concerns certainly NYCFC um but I think you have, at least I do a little bit, and, and maybe, I don't know, am I too close to it being here in New York? But I have the belief in their scouting system yeah, um, and that they've hit they've, they've uh, hit so well, right, in, in getting talent throughout the years that I'm pretty confident they'll figure this out, right? So, and, pl- and not that he's the, the answer to all, but I think Santi Rodriguez comes back. He fills in at the at the ten. Now that's a one position that you don't have a guy out of place. You know, maybe you get that number nine now, and then you could put Talis Magno back in the wing. So I think you you put those two positions in there. Um, I think you're looking more like NYCFC. So it's certainly not a you know panic button. What's going on? Um, oh come on! Week one has already started. You, of course, you have to panic right now. I think, I think it's just a matter of of you know getting those those. Uh, pieces right. Uh, Austin on the other side of that St. Louis coin, you know, some concerns there, right? Obviously. And there's a, a little bit of wonder, right? Why did Alex ring not start, you know? So he's, he's your DP, right? He's uh, a very good midfielder in this league. So some question marks there for them. Uh, the ugly, uh, the very ugly uh, Toronto. Yeah. So they didn't maybe quite work out their defense. As they hoped, you mean um, Matt Hedges was not the be, be all end all solution in Sean Johnson. Somehow you let a guy uh, in Christian Benteke, who's made a living of headers in the box, be open in the box for a header. Yeah, uh, you don't have depth either, and now you've got uh, Insigne goes off with an injury. Um, so yeah, maybe some early alarm bells for Toronto. Um, Colorado to some concerns, obviously yes. with the loss they had, and then the injury as well. On top of that, to Diego Rubio. So, um, although although I thought Yappy was looked good, right? Like uh, he didn't score, obviously, but um, young striker. I thought uh, he's a guy to keep an eye out for. Um, trying to whip around the league a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of others, you know, will seize, right? Like uh, Montreal will see, you know, not so great. Uh, Miami, yeah, you know, positive result for them. Although now word is that Campana would appear to be out a little bit longer than they expected. Right. So that's a concern. But you you, you get a 2-0 win without Campana or Martinez scoring a goal, right? That's great. Yeah. Positive for them. Um you know, Columbus will see like a, a lot of Red Bulls. We'll, we'll see when their when their DP comes in, um, how different they look. They they controlled a lot of that game against Orlando. They just couldn't get the finish, um, and 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 the and the Lions kind of nicked the win there. So 
um, kind of kind of went all around the place there a little bit. But I, I thought, you know what I thought was great? Um, and going back a little bit to to the 360 and the like to to have largely these uniform start times. Yes. I don't know about you, but it, it kind of felt, you know, especially as I was watching the whip around show, like how it felt a little like decision day. Yeah. Right. Because they, you had so much late drama, like, let's go here. Oh, another goal there. Let's go over here. Oh, another goal. You know, like, like it obviously didn't have um, the same uh, uh, magnitude because it's not the last game of the regular season, but it had, it had that drama, right? Like with so many games, kicking off the same time it meant they were finishing the same time so uh your ability to kind of look around and and, and see um these late results i thought was fun too yeah and i, and I think and we talked about season pass on uh reaction monday and what season pass tuesday <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean literally we've been talking about season pass all week and a couple of things like like you mentioned i would like for it to be more golasso showish mm. where hosts defer to play by play on site. Yep. I I want to hear I want to hear the calls. Yep. I don't want to hear the hosts at uh, the mega studio discussing the game discussing the call. I want you to lay out I want to hear the local voice. I want to hear what's going on there. And the but other again, that's fixable. That's obviously it's not a, you know, it's not a ma massive issue. There it wasn't an, you know, <clears throat> an issue about uh the picture quality or you know what i mean like it's yeah. it, it's a super simple hey guys you know going forward let's do this yeah and, and the other thing is and, and and i did a visual on the show on monday i don't want my hosts with my back to the camera looking yeah. at the massive monitor describing what's going on yeah true if, if that's going to be a part of the if that's going to be a part of the shtick break them off two on each side Still facing the camera, but in a position where they can turn and reference oh, wait, the monitor yeah. behind. Because when if my if my back is turned to you, it's almost like I'm not paying attention to you, and I'm looking at this monitor. And yes, I know that it's a visual medium, and I know that you're watching a television program, and you're assuming that the folks are watching this television program with you. But a, you're standing in front of my monitor; it's not going full, so you can't see the action. And I'm not hearing the announcers. And so literally, like I said, that is a production tweak to make it more Galazzo showish and to face the camera and have the interaction with the viewer yeah. as opposed to having your back turned and going, hey, this is a really big monitor, man. This is really great. Let's see what's going on in D.C. Right. Just you know, make it a two way street when it comes to interaction and don't block what I'm supposed to be staring at. Uh, we are in added time with you. What's going on at MLS Soccer? Oh, by the way, going back real quick, I, okay. thought, uh, I thought Sasha Kleshkin was awesome. Okay. Right. Like I, I've interviewed him a number of times, obviously, and he's always been very engaging and always been a great interview. Um, but to kind of right away to me, at least to me, right. Like seamlessly get into this. Um, and it's not easy, right? Like you, you've got to, you've got to analyze on the fly. Um, you've got to get into teams a little bit and then you got to have the banter. Right. And it's especially hard when you got Taylor Twelman next to you, um, you know, with, who leads the banter, right? Like he's, he's, he's such a petty fleur. He's so <laughs> he's, he's such a quiet presence. Um, and that's another thing too, right? I thought he was very good in there. I thought, I thought maybe some of the banter could have been expanded, right? Like he went to the coffee joke and the hoagie joke like thirty-seven times. I felt like, um, but but overall fun. So so back to your. Uh, question about the many jobs that I yes. have and what's, jobs. what's ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, more of the same, I think, for MLS. Uh, on the on the weekend, I jump on to the 430 match, which is Portland LAFC. Okay. Um, take a little break at the 730s. Got to get my daughter to bed. Right. Um, but then I'm on after the, you know, the 830s, the 1030s. Um, fun Sunday on the broadcast, you'll you'll really appreciate this. Okay. So I start off. I've got a 1 p.m. Uh, Catholic State Hockey Championship down in Coney Island. Okay. Now, what's cool is that it's actually on the same block as the original Nathan's. Nice. Yes. Been now, there. Been there, and I know where you're talking. Yep. So now I'm hoping 
that, uh, you know, no overtime, nothing delayed, right? Like we're out of there pretty quick because then I have to hightail it up to the Bronx wow. to Fordham to pick up the second or uh, the final two of a quadruple header, like a quarterfinal <laughs> basketball uh, 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 broadcast. So I've got to do um, the final two uh, and all solo, the three game solo. So, man. Well done. So, are yeah, you- so it's going to be three broadcasts in two boroughs. Yeah. On su- so are you going to grab Nathan's on the way to the train on the way out the door? Uh, no, no train. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm driving the whole way. But, yeah, I think I'm going to take it to go for sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that'll give us something to talk about next week. So, uh, Dylan, as always, Dylan underscore Butler. Welcome back, my friend. We get to talk yeah, soccer. Thank you. Thank you back.